Howdy y'all, uh, I'm one of the developers for Neurosynth Compose, and I will be covering the first half of the practical section of the course. Uh, previously, you've covered a lot of the considerations and just the layout of what a neuroimaging meta-analysis is. And now we are actually going to get our hands dirty and use this platform, Neurosynth Compose, in order to create and execute an open and reproducible meta-analysis. And this comes with a companion notebook that you'll be following along for the tutorial that is linked right here. Right. So just to orient you again, in Katie's lecture, uh, we, she covered these steps of systematic literature search, data extraction, double checking of data, and decision of specific analyses and potential sub-analyses that she pulled from the 10 simple rules for neuroimaging meta-analyses. And I will be covering these same steps in a practical section. Now, I've mentioned Neurosynth Compose multiple times, uh, but what is it exactly? It's a web-based platform for creating and re for creating reproducible and shareable meta-analyses. And it's what you'll be walking through through the tutorial today. Where we sit, Neurosynth Compose, is between the continuum of small manual meta-analyses and large automated meta-analyses. So in previous lectures, we've talked about both the pluses and minuses of each of these types of meta-analyses. And just to briefly recap, when we have small manual meta-analyses, we can say that they are going to be of good data quality since you have researchers that are manually validating the coordinate extraction, as well as which coordinates to actually include, which uh, allows you to get to very specific topics of interest. The downsides are that these meta-analyses are effortful, are difficult to update, and limited in scope. Uh, you can't cover all the topics of cognitive neuroscience by doing manual meta-analyses. There's just too much literature out there. Uh, so on the other hand, and at the end of this continuum, we have large automated meta-analyses. So these large automated meta-analyses are fast, they can scale with the literature, since as you add new literature to the database, we can run those same meta-analyses without any user input and get a result. Now, the downsides of this is that they lack precision. Uh, if we were to search attention, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be that particular researcher's usage of attention, and it might include tangential articles that the researcher would not include. Uh, and because of this slightly unclean um, usage of topics, the meta-analyses can be difficult to interpret. So whether the definition of attention fits what the researcher is actually trying to get at is unclear based on what studies are included in these automated meta-analyses. So Neurosynth Compose tries to leverage both the positives of small manual meta-analyses and large-scale meta-analyses by extracting the coordinates and uh, in terms from the large-scale meta-analyses and allowing the user to manually edit and clean up uh, some of those uh, errors or things that they would disagree with uh, as a part of that automated search. In addition, you can still just do a plain old manual meta-analysis or just a plain uh, large-scale meta-analysis with Neurosynth Compose. So before we move on, I would just want to cover a few of the terms that are important to know within the Neurosynth Compose platform. Whenever, when you log in, you'll be presented with a project. Uh, project is the main item that you'll be working with inside the Neurosynth Compose platform. When you create a new project, you will uh, then be uh, moved into creating something called a study set, which is a collection of studies. Uh, and a study is a publishable unit of research. It doesn't have to be published, but uh, typically everything that we have ingested has a publishable DOI or PMID. And within each study, there is an analysis, so or multiple analyses. And these analyses represent a contrast of conditions. In this example, uh, we see houses minus faces, so presenting the spent either pictures of houses and comparing that to the condition where they're presenting them with images of faces. And we'll see within 
uh, this table, you have peak coordinates of which of brain areas in which those, uh, those conditions were significantly different from each other. In addition to these tables, one could also have statistical images associated with them, like those that we pulled from NeuroVault. And finally, what's relevant for the study set are annotations. So the analysis is the unit of analysis for a meta-analysis. I mean, that's a mouthful. Uh, so when you want to include a, a particular analysis, you can use an annotation to do so. So as you are selecting which analyses to include, since you likely do not want to include every analysis that's within every study that, uh, that you've searched for, for a manually created meta-analysis, you'll want to have a way of selecting and labeling each analysis for inclusion or exclusion. So that is what annotations provide. Uh, once you've done this, uh, you can specify a meta-analytic algorithm from Nymer, which is the neuroimaging research, um, or the neuroimaging meta-analysis research environment. Uh, and from Nymer, you can select many of the commonly used meta-analytic algorithms. And from there, you can produce a result, which will also include uh, peak coordinates of convergence and statistical maps that are associated with that output, which can then be used as a, another pulchable unit of research. So in this workflow and tutorial, we are going to be following Dr. Analytical as she creates a meta-analysis about nicotinic acetylcholine um, agonists. So if Dr. Analytical is thinking about creating a meta-analysis on Neurosynth Compose, she would go to the platform and uh, select uh, to create a new project. And as she searches for studies, it will be querying a separate service called Neurostore, where we actually keep all of the studies and, and references to images from NeuroVault. And we can pull from PubMed, from NeuroQuery, and of course, from Neur the Neurosense database itself. So uh, from there, she queries that database and includes those studies as a part of her study set within her project. And this will be the section that I am covering. Uh, and as a user, you don't really need to understand uh, how Neurostore works, since you'll just be using Neurosynth Compose. But after she specifies the study set and labels them, the, which analysis she wants to include, then she can run and execute her meta-analysis using Nightmare. We're going to be using Google Colab to execute Nightmare and your local meta-analysis today. And from there, it will create those results. And those results can then be re-ingested by Neurostore and shared to other people. Uh, collaborators or as a reference in your publication. As I said, I'll be covering this, uh, the left side of this graph here, and the next lecture, Yifan, will be covering how to specify and execute the meta-analysis itself. So we saw in Katie's lecture, uh, there are several project stages for finding studies, curating studies, extracting metadata and coordinates from the studies, and annotating those analyses that are within those studies. Uh, in addition, with the Neurosynth platform, uh, with the Neurosynth Compose platform, we'll also be specifying the meta-analytic algorithm that you want to use, as well as executing that meta-analytic meta algorithm and uh, sharing the results of that meta-analysis. As I said, I'll be covering these steps today, the find, curate, extract, and annotate steps. So on the right here is a screenshot of what it will look like when you've created the project and have ingested some studies. Uh, and the first step here uh, that we see on the check mark is search and curate. So that'll be import, exclude, and include studies of interest. So that will be covering the first two steps in uh, in Katie's diagram. But before we touch on that, I want to mention the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, otherwise known as the PRISMA statement. 
This is the original 2009 publication, but it has an updated 2020 publication as well. And this covers all the steps from conceptualizing your meta-analysis to uh, reporting on the relevant details and uh, publishing your meta-analysis. For us, uh, and what the user has the most control over is a very particular part of this 27 item uh, checklist. And that is this, uh, this methods section. So other parts of the Prisma statement are being implemented on our platform and you will not have to think about them as much. Uh, but these steps are the steps that the user has the most control over. That's determining the eligibility, the information sources, what search strategy you want to use, what uh, selection process you're, you're using, the data collection process and the data items are uh, made easier through our platform, through extraction and annotation. But uh, for manual editing and labeling, the user is still in charge of those items. So. When we move to searching and curating our studies, we move into another four-step process. So when you're searching and curating your studies, if you've searched all your data, uh, well, if you search for studies and you now want to start filtering through them, you will first go through identification, which is where we find duplicate studies and remove them from, uh, from selection into our study set because they are duplicates. And in the next stage, we go through screening and that is where we'll find just irrelevant studies to our meta-analysis. So as I said, we're looking at uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonists. So if we have a study that's about uh, marijuana smoking or colon cancer, those would be irrelevant studies. And the next step would be eligibility, in which we uh, dive into what the eligibility criteria for the studies are, and that will likely require reading the title and abstract and perhaps even the methods in order to ascertain whether the study um, belongs inside the study set. And then finally, the column for inclusion means that we are actually including the study uh, for the meta-analysis. So, Within the original paper, here is the inclusion exclusion criteria. Uh, I will present it to you in a more meaningful way so that we can understand and break down the components better. So for inclusion, it has to be an fMRI or PET study. And the coordinates from the results need to be reported in either MNI or TALRAC stereotactic coordinate spaces. Uh, with the specific contrast, it needs to be a within, uh, between subject contrast of acute cigarette smoking nicotine administration relative to a non-smoking or placebo group. And they're looking for any cognitive or effective task or even have the participants at rest and not engaging in any explicit task. That's what we're looking for. Now, what we'd want to exclude on is if the outcome measure is functional connectivity, which is just how well the brain regions are in synchrony, uh, brain morphology, as in what are the sh different shapes of uh, different brain areas or neurochemistry, which would be the level of neurotransmitter in different uh, brain areas. Uh, so if those are the only outcome measures of the studies, then we don't want to include them. And also, we don't want to include non-human species. It's kind of implicit with the MNI and TALOAC uh, stereotactic coordinates that need to be reported, but uh, I'm just making that more of an explicit exclusion criteria. So now let's uh, take a look at a couple of examples and see whether or not we should um, exclude or include the study or promote it to the next step. Uh, so here we're looking at, is this irrelevant? So this is a part of the screening stage. So if the severity of dependence modulates smokers' neuronal cure reactivity and cigarette craving, let's divide tobacco advertisement. That does sound like uh, the topic that we are interested in. So I think that 
this study is relevant and will then decide at a later stage whether or not it's actually eligible. And now if we're looking at the, uh, the eligibility phase, now we're looking at comparison of brain and behavioral effects of uh, varicycline and nicotine in rats. And what we find here uh, is that yes, it was relevant, but it's not being done in humans. So this makes the study ineligible for inclusion, even though that they are using fMRI and they are using a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonist for this study. The fact that it's not in humans means that we would exclude this study. Okay, so now we'll move on to the next step for extraction and annotation. Once we have uh, gone through that process of eligibility and, um, and curation or searching and curation from the previous step. So now we have our study set and we have some of the coordinates that were extracted automatically by Neurosynth Compose, but we may also need to import some coordinates manually as well as label the particular studies uh, or label the particular analyses, excuse me, with their appropriate labels on whether to include them, as well as um, whether or not they are uh, form activations or deactivations, as that is uh, another feature of this particular manual meta-analysis, is that they were interested in knowing whether the coordinates represented uh, activation relative to some baseline condition or a deactivation relative to some baseline condition. So again, pulling back to the glossary, we're focusing now on the coordinates that we are pulling from the analyses and the labels and the annotations that we are using. So here's an extraction example where uh, I've created two uh, analyses where we see rest deactivations and rest activations with the coordinates reported in the table here. And we have rest activations as well. So we can see that the tables are separated based on whether the coordinates represent uh, deactivation relative to a baseline or an activation relative to a baseline. And subsequently, we can label that uh, with our annotations to say that the activations condition fits with the activations label and the deactivations uh, condition or contrast fits within the deactivations label. So rest activations is analysis and rest deactivations is analysis. And they can be labeled with the activations and deactivations labels respectively. And you'll continue that until uh, you have extracted or verified all of the studies and all of the analyses within each of the studies uh, to be correct. And uh, as a review, we just talked about Neurosynth Compose, which is our open and reproducible platform. And we went through the find and curate and extract and annotate stages of the Neurosynth Compose platform in order to um, search studies, curate those studies and get the coordinates and the labels associated that we wanted with them. So now uh, we're going to throw the ball to you and you're going to help Dr. Analytical to create a first meta-analysis using Neurosynth Compose about nicotine administration. And again, he'll be following this link to the meta-analysis notebook, which will walk you through the process. Right. Thank you. And the next lecture, when we're done, will be Yifan's, which will walk through the process of actually executing and specifying the meta-analysis. All right. Thank you.